Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 14. They're clicking right along. And boy, do we have some interesting things for you guys today. I am Keith. I'm here joined with my good buddy, Doug. Doug, how's 14 find you? 14's doing good. You know, we uh, kind of stacked up the news. We've been slacking on that. Uh, had a couple of events. We've had a lot really going on. Good, yeah. 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 All kinds of stuff. Got a really good topic. Main topic today. Something mm-hmm. that uh, I have a little bit of experience in, but I really want to hear what you got to say. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a fun one. It's a weird one. Uh, but before we get into that, let's queue up some nerd news. What do you say? Uh, let's do it. All right. Nerd news. While I get the screen share going here, this very first one, you know, Doug and I always say it. Uh, we always have to have something with artificial intelligence. And part of it is us speculating just exactly what could go wrong. And if you put artificial intelligence in the wrong hands and it's already beginning, do you want to take this one? Yeah. So a uh, gym teacher accused of using AI voice clone to try to get a high school principal fired. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the title says it all, but it going does. down, it happened in Baltimore. Yep. Uh, they believe, uh, a recording that was circulating on social media mm-hmm. was the start of all this. Uh, you know, unfortunately, racist and anti-Semitic comics that were made were fake. Yep. Uh, the use of AI there. So they made a deep fake of the principal's voice. Yep. And then created a voicemail of some sort with anti-Semitic and racist rants, which, of course, the principal did not do. But this is uh, scary because we're already in the age of misinformation, and now AI is going to blur that line, especially heading into election year and all the wars going on, and then people using it for this. This is the dark side of unchecked AI. Now, I don't know how you're going to be able to control it. Um, You know, I will say this, and I wanted your opinion on it. So the same technology that this guy used uh, to clone a voice, somebody can take and replicate your voice and a scam's going on where they will call and sound like you. So they can call your mom, Doug, sound like Doug and say, Hey, I'm in a jam. I need you to send me some money, blah, blah, blah. And it sounds just like you. And the cool thing is, well, it's not cool, but it's interesting. If your mom asks questions, it's able to respond in your voice because, you know, they can even use a learning language model that understands what she's saying and can answer questions. Um, So, one of the things that the law enforcement are now saying that as a family you should do is have a safe word or a code yes. word. Yep. And it reminds me kind of like when we were kids and they say if there's a fire in the house, you need to have a, a plan of, you know, meet by the mailbox to get out kind of a thing. That's what it kind of reminds me of. And I think the idea behind it is you can ask and say, OK, if this is Doug, what's the family code word? Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate that we've got to these times. You, we have the, uh, whatever I'm trying to say, two-factor authentication oh, there you go. Yeah. on the email and stuff. And it's unfortunate we have to do two-factor authentication almost on the telephone now or the yeah. cell phone. Nobody yep. has telephones anymore, but yeah. Uh, yeah. It's unfortunate. But yep. that's the world we live in. The more advanced AI gets, uh, we're having deep fake videos uh, mm-hmm. I'm kind of worried of the days when we have deep fake uh, FaceTime calls and stuff like that. Oh, so. geez. Yeah, I know. it's And it's getting there. I'm always sending Doug AI stuff. And there was one that I sent the other day that in real time, it changed a person's face. Kind of like what he's saying. Like, you can do it now with FaceTime calls. It changed this girl's face to make her look younger, to make her look different. And what she pointed out was it's not like a Snapchat filter where it overlays, you know, because if you put your hand and kind of it kind of distorts, she was doing this and moving her face and the fake, the deep fake stayed with it. It was so weird. Crazy. Yep. Crazy weird. So, yeah, be diligent, people. Don't believe everything you read. Don't believe everything you see. Don't believe everything you hear. Fact check. Use your brain. Yeah, and you got to know with every technology from the invention of the telephone, some bad person is going to use it to do harm or Mm -hmm. for their own financial good or benefit. So 
Yep. Uh, we're seeing that again with AI, whatever the new technology is 10 years down the road, someone bad's going to use that. So yep. we it just got to protect ourselves and be careful. Channel it to good. So yes. All right. Well, we're going to continue on that track. AI train. You take this one uh, as well. Yeah. So we talked about uh, the humane AI pin. I was worried I've messed that name up. You nailed like it. A week or two ago. Uh, the competition Rabbit R1 is getting ready to release their device, and they're really having some positive reviews up front before the release. The one thing I've noticed is uh, no subscription fee, and there's not a lot of complaints about heat. So that Humane AI pin, lots of problems with the heat, lots of problems with uh, very slow responses. It's not really device-based it's cloud-based it has to go out and grab that answer and then come back to you so uh, not a lot of happy people out there yeah and this is not without its critiques uh, but it's a it's a first product right i mean it, but it's definitely done better than the pen uh it's faster i think a lot of doug and i were talking about this i i think a lot of it has to do with this actually has a dedicated processor on board and the learning language model is running within an ai operating system on board yep. where the pen would go out the pen went out to the cloud for everything um, this doesn't have a subscription it's faster on responses now the the critique is that it's kind of still limited in what it can do. It's like, well, I can ask it questions. I guess a lot of people are comparing it to, well, how is this better than me just opening up a tab in Chrome and going right. to chat JPT? Right. That's kind of the biggest criticisms, but the device itself is quite functional. Now, what is cool, one thing that this does have over it is that somebody can turn the camera on, point it at something and say, tell me about this car. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen them take a picture of a car and and, and say, hey, how much does this car retail for or what is this plant it can't that's easier to do than just open up a chrome browser although i'm sure the apps are going to get to that point as well but you know it is better than the pen so far yeah looking into the numbers uh, this cost 199 bucks the ai pen costs about 700 yeah the ai pen also requires a 24 dollar a month subscription to fee subscription fee sorry mm -hmm. So you're saving money right there. You know, take a $700 gamble of, does this thing work? Is it good? Or a $200 gamble with no monthly uh, fee, cancel any time, return it maybe. I think that's a way better option. It's going to get a little more activity and acceptance. Yeah, the cost of entry on this is way better. Uh, and ease of use. Having a screen on it. The other was like a projector, wasn't it? And you put your hand in front of it and it Yeah, it, it kind of had hand. a... Not to use the word gimmicky, but it had some extra features, which I don't think were really necessary. I believe people are looking for that camera and that knowledge base rather than, hey, let me take a phone call on my hand. What, but it was really cool, though. It's a cool concept. It really is. But I think we're going to see more and more of these products and companies step in the fray. It'll be interesting when you see the big, the big time tech companies really step in that are used to making uh, hardware and see what their take is on this. So. Yeah, just kind of thinking out loud, I really like these devices for accessibility. Mm -hmm. uh, things I'm thinking of or different languages or Translation. even yep. uh, hearing impaired. You know, if this thing mm -hmm. can watch somebody's hands yep. and tell you what they're saying if you don't know uh, sign That's cool. language. That's even and better. then maybe give the message back on the screen with a pair of hands, that would be great. Yeah. See, those are all great applications. See, that's the positive side of how you can use AI. Yes. Um, so yeah, man, that's great. I think that's good. So it'll be interesting to see where this technology goes. Yeah. So continuing oh, on to new devices, mm -hmm. make sure I follow which one you're going to. Yeah. We have quite a few. Uh, this yeah, is up your so alley. It is. <laughs> With the... Uh, Release of emulators on the iPhone. Uh, other companies are kind of continuing the emulation. We have the Yano. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure. Yano, A Y A N E O, Fancy and, Pocket yeah. S. I've heard it, Anna Neo. I've heard that. Anna Neo, okay. Yeah, I've heard different pronunciations, but they're, they're capitalizing on the handheld market, like Steam yeah. Deck, right? So, yeah, to describe for our listeners, it looks like a Steam Deck. It's got two uh, thumbsticks, D-pad, your X, Y, A, B, uh, maybe a couple start speakers. It looks very slimline, like a 
cell phone with a couple uh, pads on the back, like L and R pads. It's running Android though. Yeah. And it's uh, got the new, uh, it's one of the first devices that has a new sta- Snapdragon 32, or th- sorry, G3 X Gen 2 uh, chip, uh, which is supposed to be pretty fast. But the cool thing about this, if you're into emulation, which we're going to talk about here in a moment, um, on the next uh, one, you could even run old school retro games on it, let alone probably relatively new stuff, you know, with the Snapdragon. Yeah, if you hit that arrow over there, it gives some pretty good stats. Oh, sweet. I didn't even know that. Thank you. So uh, 16 gigabytes uh, on board up to a terabyte expansion. It's got, like you said, that Snapchat, Snapdragon G3X really fast. Uh, everything you want to do. The emulators that I've seen that are really power hungry are Dreamcast. And then anything above uh, PS2, PS3, that's where you're going to need some more processing power on the back end. This might Super be able Nintendo, to do it. all that other stuff, uh, you can run that on yeah. a potato almost. But you can. You really can. Uh, but you're right. Uh, GameCube does good overall, but certain games like Star Wars, uh, mm-hmm. certain Star Wars games that are kind of intensive a little bit more. But um, other than that, you're right. You know, you get into Dreamcast yeah. and then upward into the PlayStation stuff and obviously Xbox, even Xbox One. And then, of course, 360 and PlayStation yeah. uh, 3. They get kind of heavy. Uh, but this has a pretty beefy specs on it. Um, and I'd like appreciate that they give you a decent you know, storage on it. Uh, pricing wise, I noticed clicking through the tabs there. That's funny. They have two editions resolution. They have a 1080p and then a 1440p. I, don't, I wonder if you really would notice the difference that much. You know? Yeah, on such a small screen. That's yeah, but on a TV. Yeah, for sure. If it yeah. has output, yes, like output to a TV. Does it uh, low scale your output to a TV with a lower model? It's a good point. If it has, I'm sure it has USB C on it, and I bet you could output this to an HDMI to go to a TV. And maybe that's maybe that's part of what this is. It's like yeah. what it can output to. It's not just on the device itself. Uh, but you're well, what are those prices there? I mean, you're looking at oh five hundred and nine for retail, up to seven fifty for one model. Yeah, they're not bad. I mean, that's about yeah. what you're going to spend for you know a handheld. So pricing's not, not too crazy. Enough. It looks really good. The design's great. Super thin, uh, as long as it's not too thin to where stuff gets hot inside. Yeah. If you're an Android person and you're a gamer, it's kind of an interesting little niche. Absolutely. Know? So yeah. I, I did not expect find. this. Yeah. I didn't expect this one. So now in that same vein, and we don't mean to be video game heavy, we try to switch it up, but you know, hey, the news is the news. Uh, this is a big time, long time coming. Apple's had a lot of changes where, you know, we've talked about it before. They, you know, they're forced to drop the lightning connection. They are having to implement new standards when it comes to uh, the messaging agent yeah. to become, you know, more ecosystem friendly because of the EU. Um, e, uh, Epic Games for Fortnite sued them because of the practices that they had that were considered monopolistic with their app store. All these things have been piling uh on to apple and this article doesn't seem to have an image of it uh but what it is is that they had to open up the app store to allow retro game emulators that's not been allowed before and so you know this is a byproduct of that and it's i haven't tried it yet i want to but i've been reading different ones and they, they say it's pretty cool let's see i might put that on here there we go emulators on ios so the best one I've found, I believe, is called Delta. Delta. Uh, and it, it depends on the uh, model that you want to do, um, you know, or what, what video game system you want to have. Oh, yeah, here's Delta. You're right. I'm going to pop it right here. So here's a so Game I've Boy. I've seen a lot of good stuff about that. While you're talking, looking that over, I kind of jumped ahead. But, yes, Apple is uh, allowing emulation apps on the uh, iPhone or the iOS system. And what that means for people is emulation. You're emulating an old device. So if you want to play Super Nintendo, NES, Genesis, all that good stuff, it emulates it onto these newer systems. Correct me if I'm wrong there. I'm laughing because there's a Commodore 64 prompt, which is an ancient computer on the iPhone. And that just cracks me up. It's kind of weird to see, to be honest with you. Um, It looks like it's running really well. Well, it does. But like you said, a lot of these really old things you could 
what do you say? You run it on a potato. potato. (laughs) (laughs) That's what a lot of these are. Um, Like that's 64. Some of the good ones I've seen, like they're Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. What's cool about it is the screens are so big that it puts the actual game up in the top half and then the bottom half becomes a controller. Yeah. And so that's kind of a, an interesting design. I was going to see if I can find, uh, here we go. There you go. There's some good footage of it. Oh, those look really cool. And with the screen looking pretty sharp and bright on a lot of these devices, I mean, yep. that's that's pretty cool. I was tr- trying to see if, uh, that, you know, they always said that up to this point, Android's had emulators for a long time now, and iPhone has not. Uh, but, of course, this breaks down the EU, and now you can do it. Uh, so what's interesting about this is if you add in, you know, cloud gaming on top of now you can emulate, you're kind of getting to the point where if you have a phone, you can have almost any type of game with you at that yeah, point absolutely. which is which is cool now my thing is screen size i mean yeah and they have decent i have the largest you know iphone that you can have but even at that i'm just kind of like i don't know uh i don't know if i'd want to play on that that's the one of the advantage of the steam deck is a little bit larger of a screen same for, you know, i'd argue the same for the switch you know um but it's interesting that they're allowing this now so i'm, I'm glad i'm glad they're doing that yeah definitely I have uh, done some emulation on the uh, Android? Android world. Yeah. Uh, previous phones, you know, it gets really hot. Uh, a lot of processing, mostly in those Dreamcast games, like mm-hmm. I said. But uh, Super Nintendo, everything else, it runs amazing. It's a little weird to touch the screen. There's and no, not have a tactile hap- button. Yeah. yeah, there's no haptic feedback, no uh, pushing in of the D-pad. And the stuff. It's a good point. So it's a little weird. I'm definitely going to try it. Because yeah. I have a lot of ROMs and I want to give it a shot because, hey, why not, right? Now, I, I'll ask you this uh, from the iOS world. Can I hook like a uh, uh, 8-bit dough uh, controller to yes. an iPhone? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I've already done it with both my iPad and my iPhone because they're Bluetooth enabled. You can do it. And what's Perfect. cool about it, I used it with uh, the the Steam steam client they have where you can stream from your gaming machine to uh, a device and oh. i've done that i also did it with my playstation 5 and i to connected your yeah and to my oh. ipad in nice. any of those and what's cool is i've used a playstation controller i synced i've used my uh, 8-bit doe controller uh, i have had numerous controllers that i have synced very successfully to so you could easily on your phone just sync one of those controllers and and I'm, I'm assuming there's control options where you go full screen on it and you wouldn't have to use the on-screen controller. Oh, very nice. So, so yeah, it, I, it'll, it'll be cool. I'm going to give it a shot. I'll report back how it is. Absolutely. So, that's cool. That's something new. This next one's nuts. Uh, I'm going to say this before we get right. into this. I feel like since we started this podcast that every single time we do the news, humanity is pushing technology to what we used to see in the movie theaters of what led to dystopian world ending stuff, you know, like Skynet used to just be like with Terminator. Oh, that's not going to happen. You know, like <laughs> the stuff you see in black mirror. Nah, it's not going to happen. Walking dead. That's not going to happen. I swear to God, every single week, there's something in the news. that's like, well, that's not a good idea. You know, it's like, Oh, you know, we found something underneath the pyramids. Let's open it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> this is in that line. So <laughs> they took a robot, like a Boston Dynamics robot that's like Spot, which is the four lady creature that the military actually uses, and they put a flamethrower on it. <laughs> because of the, of course, why not? <laughs> because we can. And what's funny is it makes a point that flamethrowers are legal in most states of the US because it's deemed okay for snow removal. Because that seems super efficient for. They even have a laser sight on the thing. And look, can you imagine this patrolling your yard? I know our friend Matt would probably get one of these and have it patrol his yard and with a laser sight and a flamethrower on it. Now, I wonder if it like uh, fries a mole. Will it kind of rotisserie it for you? Probably moles are underground though, man. I don't don't know. I'm sure they have a. It like catches it. I'm sure they have a, a robot that can dig and then throw it up. I mean, this is just. This is insane. And then here, I'm going to skip ahead to this video. When you see this thing fire, it's flamethrower. Look at that. 
It's like a 20 foot stream of fire. You can set a forest on fire with this thing. Now, you say that, that would be interesting for controlled burns. I know uh, our conservation. Did you see it jump? It just jumped in the air. That stopped me completely. I did not mean to interrupt you, Doug. No. I want to rewind this. That this is crazy. <laughs> it's sh- <laughs> so why does it need to jump? That's my question. So it kills us more effectively when it becomes sentient. Oh I'm sorry God. to interrupt you. I did not expect in the video no, I, the robot to jump crazy. in the air while shooting a flamethrower. <laughs> I, I take back my comment about helping the conservation department. I know you're trying to put a positive spin on it. And this thing's doing like ninja moves where that could totally kill humanity. Yeah, we probably need to watch out for that. <laughs> And that's a good two or three feet. It was. It was, and it was. It, it wasn't even a run. It did it straight off the ground. It just yeah, jumped in the air. Imagine if it's got some speed built up. Well, why does it need to do that? <laughs> it's so scary. I, yeah, so, to your point, maybe this yeah. could be used to fight fires. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you do a burn line in the woods to kind of stop a fire. Can you imagine the robot wars you could have now? Oh my gosh! With these new ones, BattleBots. And, uh, oh, my wife and I love BattleBots. We take, are take two of these. Fans. Oh, strap yeah. some weapons on them. Yeah, I just wow. Hope they don't get out of the cage. No, hope not. <laughs> they could probably jump out of the cage. <laughs> what a great but scary story! <laughs> oh my gosh, this is nuts. Anyway, this was too good to be true. We had to add it. It's just it's stupid where these things are going. Not to mention. Boston Dynamics, we did we missed this. They have a new robot. They retired. Oh, thing is here. Freaky. We're gonna just go there. You gotta show it now. Yeah. There we go. It's even one of the top searches. It's the this new Atlas. Bits over backwards now watch or... this thing get up. So it's on the video feed. It's laying on the ground prone, flat. It twists its legs of like a scary movie and then raises <laughs> up. Oh. oh yeah, that's not right. It's Body is not as thick as the prior one. It's more streamlined, more agile. It's got like a screen on its face now, um, or at least it's got the ability to have more cameras on. I think they'll put a screen on it eventually. Yeah, man. (laughs) We're going to (laughs) die. So what we need to know is Boston Dynamics is Cyberdyne. Well, you know, they are associated. I mean, they've they've been working with DARPA, right, on a lot of this stuff, so. I don't know, man. <laughs> Although, if, you know, if you let me ask you this. If you had this guy, he has uh, articulating fingers, let's just say, and he's smart. Let's say he's got a chat GPT integrated. Would you let him in your house? I mean, we're talking. He could do your laundry, Doug. Make your bed. Do your dishes. I mean, wash your car. <sighs> um, I don't know. So Mow I'm your lawn up right now. Paint your so- house. Fix things. It would have to have, and I had to look it up. Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics. Yes, First I agree. Law, a robot may not harm a human being or I allow agree. a human being to become harmed through inaction. It's a great book, by the way. Yep. Yeah. And I I'll, robot. I'll let you read second law, third law, but yeah. as long as it has his uh, laws, I think we'll be okay. I had read that in Japan, they're early adopters of a lot of robotics. Did you know that they use the Asmavian laws in a lot of their robotics? I'm glad they did. And they embedded it in their coding. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't Unless know. You I always said. robot situation. If I was an old man, like invalid at home, what a great caretaker. <laughs> yeah. If that thing is safe enough to pick someone up out of bed. Yeah. Well, they're talking about using them in hospitals to yeah. for that very purpose, to move patients safely. I mean, peaceful purposes. Yeah. That's what I, I would like. You're right. If it was peaceful, I I totally would do it. Boy, we're going to become really lazy if they start doing all of our work and all of our thinking. Uh, I do like Wally, but that movie tells us a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is a cautionary tale. All right. Wow. Let's end this on a on a different note. <laughs> you added this one. Let's you talk about it because these are uh, Elgato products, which. Ooh, huge fan of Elgato products. I'm using their camera. I'm using their key light. Uh, I'm using their stream deck. Yep. You are, it's your microphone in Elgato, right? Yeah. Elgato mic, uh, camera. I have a light as well. I have a stream deck as well. So they have a new uh, one called Neo. What is this? Yeah. So it's a whole new product line. It looks like it's nice and cute little stuff. They've uh, redesigned their mic, uh, light, camera, and stream deck. Kind of all one. Uh, product line 
that all uh, looks the same. It looks so cool. Now they went with white. I'm sure they have it in black. Yeah. Um, now that's uh, really cool with the camera because I've got a clip on yeah. piece blocker. Yeah. I believe you do too. So. I love their camera. It is the best quality. It works amazing. Oh. Now it, it's like the closest you can get to actually using a DSLR, uh, but it's a webcam. It is yeah. so, they have such great products. What is that? That's a really cool device. It's like a dock with uh, where oh, you can play yeah, video they, games on an iPad. They designed a new dock that I actually looked at, and it moves. They have one for your, like a boom mic. Really? And then they have one for other devices as well. <sighs> You're make me spend money, aren't you? You jerk. Why'd you put this in here? <laughs> My bad. Because I've been thinking, I got this honking Blue Yeti, and it's amazing sound, but it's kind of big. I don't yeah. know. If I could get something that had this sound quality and smaller, well, Look at that mic; it's tiny. But and it if it sounds like yours, hardly no space at all. See, I've I like got the, this huge uh, the key light uh, that they. This. Yeah, I like that that key light uh, had. One thing buttons I don't like on the side. It's got buttons. You can adjust the. I have to use an app for mine, and that's I'm mine not a fan has an of that. app as well. And it's I'm not a fan. Pain in the butt. Yeah. It's I'm not a fan of that. But speaking they, of light, I am so sorry to the fans. I did not turn my arcade on. Oh my goodness. I just uh, let our super fan uh, know, you know who you are, that I'm sorry I didn't turn the arcade on. <laughs> Sacrilege. Wow. Anyway, back to the topic here, man. Yeah. Uh, Elgato making cool stuff. I'm going to check this stuff out because they make neat stuff. Uh, and actually, I even have an Elgato screen behind me. You know, guys know I'm, I am I don't have a cool room like Doug. Uh, I don't I don't make I Doug money. I cats <laughs> over here. Look at that. I don't make Doug money. That's a joke. Actually, no, I have, I have kids. That's why I'm poor. Uh, but... I don't have a cool room, so I have to rely on, uh, but I have an Elgato screen and it retracts and rolls up and down and it helps with the magic. So they make great products. So I'm glad hey, you I would like to say that all the stuff behind me is because of you. So I appreciate you helping me decorate my room. I don't think your wife now, would Maybe not like the that. cat, but uh, everything else. Yeah. Well, I know Brian's hooked you up with some really cool uh, swag there in the background. Yeah. So that helps. But anyway, all right, that does it for the nerd news, man. I'm going to quit that share. And we are going to go into our next topic. Now, I want to I want to preface this this next topic. What we try to do, we have a wide variety of people who are in video games, comic books, movies, sci fi stuff, book nerds. But we try to alternate where we'll say, OK, well, you know what we're going to do? We've been heavy on movies. Let's do a game one. We've been heavy on games. Let's do a TV show. Heavy on TV shows. Let's talk about a technology. Type. We really try to mix it up. Yeah. Now, this We've been heavy on video games lately because we just last weekend went to the Retro Game Con. And, and I know not everybody's into video games, but this is a unique niche thing that Doug brought up. If you love cheesy B movies. Yeah. And even if you're not in video games, this may be your thing. There was a brief moment uh, in the 90s where and it was around the time CDs, compact disc for all you youngins out there, came around and storage capacity increased. When well, the minute storage capacity increased, not only did movies start to make the switch from uh, VHS tapes over to DVDs and to CD-ROMs, video games in the 90s went into what was called full motion video. And they just made all of these games as fast as they could. <clears throat> and Doug brought this up as some that he was kind of interested in checking out. And I played tons of them because I, I was a PC gamer uh, back in the day. So there are, a lot of them were on the PC. Now, if you had a Sega CD, which a lot of these are on Sega CD as well, we want to showcase some of them. And Doug, I'm going to let you just launch into like, what got you into looking at this? And then you started, you can watch a lot of these videos uh, on YouTube, right? You don't have to play the game if you don't want to go find it. No, not at all. So what got me into this uh, all the way back in the beginning was um, Space Ace and Dragon's Lair. You know, you see these games at the arcade. Uh, that's uh, really colorful images. And then what really caught my eye, though, is I swear I've seen this artwork before, and I have. So the artist for those games, a Don Bluth, made several movies. You know, growing up, I loved uh, The Land Before Time, Five Oak Goes West, uh, I think All Dogs Go to Heaven. But oh, yeah. back on track, he made the artwork for these games. And it's just like watching a movie, but they were so hard. They I were. don't know if you ever played these in the arcade, but there's certain sequences in this basically cartoon movie that you have to push a button to make the cartoon movie go ahead. That's a... a 
rough um, depiction of what's they, happening, but they, they were timed events, yes. and so Thank it's you. like you're watching the cartoon and you had to hit up or down, and, and they had very little direction. The arcade was hard. Now the footage I'm showing now is Space Age, and, and it's on the Sega CD. Yeah. Uh, so this would have been on home consoles, but you're right. Like playing one of these games is like choose your own adventure. They were hard. They were very, they very hard. Game. A lot of time to make a decision and you have no idea what decision to make. Correct. But they were, I mean, the games were beautiful. I mean, the oh, other yes. one was uh dragon's lair and that was, you know, one of also an early one. Both of these were on the arcade first. And this is also mm-hmm. Sega CD, if I remember correctly. So these games are really, really good. And it started with doing this as a cartoon. But then they just started, they decided, okay, now that we have all the storage capacity, let's start doing this with, uh, you know, the full motion live action people. And those are some of the other ones that we were, we were talking about. Now I did find both of these games were really hard. The artwork, honestly, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, heavy metal <laughs> in yeah. some way, but, uh, you're right. He, he, Don Bluth, he's well known um, for all of these, but I never was a huge fan of these games. I loved the way they looked. I saw it on a Commodore Amiga the first time, also an arcade, but I, I they were too hard. I wasn't I wasn't very good at them. Yeah. So, so we'll, going back to other FMV games, uh, ooh, whichever so one you want to start with. We're going to start with uh, Starfleet yeah, Academy. Absolutely. What was interesting about this, the acting is so bad. Uh, so the idea is that you are a, a, a cadet in Starfleet and they use these full motion video sequences all throughout it. And they even had actual members of like, you know, Star Trek, the mm-hmm. original series. We're talking uh, good old fashioned James T. Kirk there, William Shatner, Sulu, uh, the guy that played Chekhov, George Takai, uh, I believe Scotty. James uh, Duhan, do do little was in it as well. I'm playing it on the screen right now, and they did it all on blue, like blue screen, like kind of like what I have, but like really cheesier, like what weather people had. So the backgrounds were all digital, but they would put the people, you know, in. You can kind of see that on here. Now their acting was good because they're actual good actors, right? This is one of the more higher quality ones. Now they had in the game different characters and i'll bring that up like this they weren't very good at acting (laughs) you know if you saw the original cast they were awesome in the game Uh, but some of these uh characters were just like (laughs) they were so bad at acting their dialogue you can tell they're like reading from a cue card i don't know it was it was so bad uh but it's fun to check out i don't know if you ever saw this one or not i have not but uh I i like it it looks good I don't know about the acting. It's by Interplay. Yeah. Interplay so, did Fallout 1. Well, the one thing about FMV games is it's almost like a movie, so you don't really know control-wise what you're supposed to do. So games yeah. nowadays, they'll highlight a pickup, or they'll give you a map. This is an actual movie that you're playing in. And oftentimes, you know, the the live action didn't mesh with the digital backgrounds. I don't know the art. See, you can kind of look on the Star Trek one. It's very cartoony, but you have real people on top of it. And you're right. Some of them were timed events uh, and things like that. So let's get into some of the real interesting ones. Now, yeah, popular wise, there was when the Sega CD came out, <clears throat> there was a game called Sewer Shark. Uh, now, this was an interesting play. Like Doug said, you are literally driving this weird device in the future. Uh, in these sewers and it was timed events and I'm, I'm playing the video right now so it had like a very top gun feel you know he's got a helmet on he's talking in you talking to robots but as the the video is very small and as you're going through the sewers you're having to move your cursor to shoot these like robotic bat things with these little pellets but you can see it looks like an actual video it was a tough yeah. game as well but this came with the sega cd and it really did showcase because you're right it's like playing a movie now that one looks a little easier to play just because you've got a uh, It's on rails. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a on rails shooter. So yeah. It looks very interesting. It it, it is. It is. It was it had some good actors too. Um Oh, what's that guy's I name? I can't think of his name, but yeah, right there. There he is. Yep. Um, he was in some mob movies, I believe. Uh, I think it was Robert Costanzo, it says here, if he was Stenchler, if I remember correctly. Yeah, let me do a search real quick. Yeah, 
And <clears throat> yes. So. Yep. And it said that the director was uh, John Dijkstra, which was best known. He did special effects on the Star Wars movie, the original ones. Oh, very nice. Was that the right guy? Yes, it was. All right. So there were some decent actors in this one, but they, they spent a lot of money. This was their like launch title to really show that, hey, the Sega CD has all this capability with video. And it was like playing a movie. And this really did attract people. But it was it was still cheesy, even had a decent actor. And you can see here some of the footage is so bad. But let's continue with the cheese. Now, this is the one that you talked about. You watched. <clears throat> I'm going to let you. What got us on this topic was he asked me, hey, have you ever played this? And I did play this. My brother and I own this game. Uh, how did you find out about it? And what have you been doing lately? <laughs> so way back when um, EGM, Electronic Gaming Monthly, was a video game magazine I loved. I always went to the grocery store and picked it up. I remember seeing an ad for Ground Zero Texas in here. But I never had a Sega CD or a Sega Mega CD, I believe is what it's called. And I always wanted to. And then... One day last week, I see an ad for Ground Zero Texas on YouTube, and I watch it, and I watch it for about an hour. It <laughs> an is, hour? Oh, yeah. I, so it was a full playthrough. You're watching it yep. now. I, it was interesting. <laughs> That's all it's I can so say. cheesy. So it's an on-rails uh, shooter, shooter as well. Yes. And uh, Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's down in Texas. Uh, when you shoot the aliens, they explode like that. Yeah. Uh, there's like aliens that invade this small town in Texas, and you have to infiltrate them. And, and there's a lot of Texas cliches. There's, yeah. There's like yeah. rednecks. Uh, it's, oh, my God. It's so cheesy. My brother and I had a Sega City. We had this game. Oh, my God. It was, I never beat it. It was a tough game, but I was yeah. younger. Oh, gosh. It's so so cheesy and the the suits that the aliens wore oh, uh yeah. was so cheesy the acting was terrible because they're talking like right at you breaking the, the fourth oh, absolutely. wall oh my gosh it's you know the concept is a uh, little town in texas and these aliens are uh, adopting human bodies and you don't know if it's an alien or not yep. and then you set out these sentry cannons you're not even like walking around with a gun these sentry cannons are observing these different areas and and you have to switch between the cannons to observe yeah. and then you have to guess or put together who may be an alien in disguise because they could be disguised and then it, it ends up in these shootout moments and yeah. where there's cheesy explosions and it's... no i'm sure this was kind of their first attempt at a light gun shooter yeah but uh you know something's gonna happen because the music cues mm -hmm. and then this person with these little brackets on each side of his body come out and you're like hmm, that's a clue yeah yeah it was interesting it was an interesting playthrough i told doug that there's actually a nuclear version of this which almost seemed like a second version I don't know of if it i have another hour for that I, I don't know but he was you can watch this on on youtube if you want to watch a playthrough which is kind of yeah. fun now in that same vein talking about we had a sega cd uh, we also had this i played the crap out of this and i was terrible at it as well it was also a tiny bit tom cat alley if you are into top gun you basically fly one of these uh tom cats i'm playing the video here and <clears throat> it's kind of on rails as well it was timed events where you, you had to shoot things uh and fire missiles at the right time and it would take all of this footage of the jet and you in your cockpit and you can tell they're blowing up models <laughs> and they would interweave it throughout the game. Uh, the, the thing is the acting was just so bad when you would get back yeah. to do your mission briefings, they were trying to be all serious and intense and the acting is just, just terrible, uh, terrible acting. And you had to make choices in the game and dialogue and uh, it's just so bad. Uh, Sega city. <laughs> The models. I'm sorry. It's just it's so cheap. Oh, memories. All right, let's go on to the next one. This was an arcade. Did you play yeah. this? Oh, I love this game. You take this. This was a shooter as well, right? With a light gun? Yeah. Now I may get some hate, but I think our local pizza hut had this game. Or Mazio's. Mazio's Pizza mm -hmm. had this game. And they did. It was amazing. I didn't know that. I didn't know they had this. That's cool. Basically, so uh, to set it up Western. for those, it's a Western shooter. Uh, I believe the arcade cabinet, I'll look it up, had uh, two guns. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, you'd kind of get a little storyline, go out and clear the bandits out in this town. And it's also super cheesy. I mean, you just tell by the footage. Yeah. The acting is overacting. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's like a 
a really bad show, you'd see it like Silver Dollar City or down in Branson, Missouri or something, you know? <laughs> and I think it had a lot of different spinoffs, too. Yes, it did. It, it, it had some sequels as well. Uh, boy. All right. Let's get into some controversial ones. Have you ever heard of Night Trap? I have. And uh, I can kind of explain it or let you go. But it got the attention of the United States uh, legislature. It did. It's a terrible game. <laughs> it's so bad and kind of racy too it was i'll give you the premise so the idea is that there are cameras all throughout a house and you have to click on each one of the cameras and then there were these timed events and you would watch these scenes play out between girls having a sleepover and essentially you you had to try to catch these what it was weird called vampires which was just dudes in like wearing all black uh, who had these weird contraptions that would put around the girls necks and sometimes they were in their underwear. Uh, it, but it was considered uh, very racy because of the way they treated women, uh, sexual innuendo suggestions about rape. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's so cheesy. When you go back now and you look at it, you're like, wow, this doesn't seem as bad as they were making it out. You know, women in lingerie. I mean, there wasn't full blown nudity in it, uh, but they, this was one of the very first games. I mean, they had this on the 3DO, which was before the Sega CD. Yep. And it was controversial. And it, there was a whole thing about it getting banned um, because, you know, people thought it was inappropriate. <clears throat> and what was interesting, it says that Night Trap was originally developed uh, for the control vision system called Nemo. And it used VHS tapes instead of cartridges. But then, of course, there was a resurgent whenever CDs and, and discs came out because yeah. obviously it's a lot quicker and easier for it to, to do it. And it was one of those things that just caused so much controversy. I put this in the vein of Mortal Kombat. You know, Mortal Kombat came around, pulling hearts out. People were throwing a fit and doom. Everybody's like, oh, my gosh, these games are out of hand. I, I think this kind of got a lot of flack for um, being racy. And, you know, then news media outlets pick it up. Playing through it, it's not a good game. No. I didn't think it was a good game. It's and it's not I, fun either. Yeah. yeah. And you, you I've think, watched the playthrough of it. Well, you think it's going to be all racy too, or like, oh, what's what's going on here? You know, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it, I think it's a byproduct of the time. It's kind of like you go back and play Doom. And I get it. At the time, you had never seen anything like that before. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a weird game. I never really fully understood it, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, I won't spend too much time on it, but it definitely got the attention of uh, the federal legislature, uh, along with games. You said Mortal Kombat, Doom, all this violence in video games. Uh, they were worried about the youth, and uh, they're still worried about that with Grand Theft Auto and stuff. That's a whole another show, but... Yeah, it is. But this is kind of in that same vein. It's just that it was deemed as a, inf a negative influence on, on kids, and yeah. so... I don't know. I never saw the controversy even back then, but all right, let's do some positive ones. Uh, I played yeah. this first on, I believe it was a, a, a Commodore at a friend's house, seventh guest. Now what's interesting about this, it was actually a very good game. They would do these full motion video sequences. It was a house and there's all these, these ghosts essentially. And they would play out the scene and you had to figure out what had happened in the house. But what was cool is they had puzzles, like actual really good like puzzles you had to figure out in the game in order to see the next sequence and to figure out what's going on. They actually remastered this. Night Dive Studios remastered this recently and they ran the video through a composite and made it more high res. Oh. And so it's actually a really a really good game. Did you ever mess with this one at all? I did not, and I haven't heard of it. It looks really good, actually, the puzzles and uh, yeah. playing cards now. Yeah, it's different because it didn't rely on the full motion video for the game part. That's where they yeah. were smart. They actually use like 3D, and they'd have, like like you said, cards, or they'd have cans of soup aligned. You have to spell out things or, yeah. uh, you know, a clock, chess kind boards. Creepy looking, too. It is. It had a, had a, had a vibe to it. The, the acting's terrible, <laughs> but, uh, you know. but this was one of the better ones. This one's hailed as one of the better full motion video games. Uh, another one in that vein is Phantasmagoria. It's also supposed to be kind of creepy. Now, this was I didn't play this one very much. It was kind of a point and click adventure game, but they had these sequences of video uh, throughout it, and uh, it was supposed to be kind of kind of creepy. What was unique about it was they did motion capture 
on the character that you're clicking and moving around. And so it was actually what you were moving around was a video of kind of a person moving around. And then they have these terrible acting sequences in between. Uh, now, I never played this one, but I've, I've heard it's actually not bad. So, oh, yeah, it also got a little bit of flack for being a little racy. There was a few like s- not sex scenes, full blown sex scenes, but there were, you know, intimate scenes that they thought shouldn't be in video games. So, yeah. All right. We're getting to the end of the list. I'm gonna let you take this next one. Area 51, man. Uh, so many hours on this. Um, I've got it on the arcade cabinet behind me, but I don't have a light gun. Area 51. So you are a responding force going to Area 51, which the aliens have broke out and more aliens have come to rescue their uh, captured brethren and uh, fallen. Uh, Really good. It's a light gun game. For those who don't know, light guns uh, shoot... uh, and you'll have to help me here. It shoot it either captures the screen or shoots something at the screen to register. Yeah, it was hits. back in the day when we had uh, CRT monitors, cathode ray yes. tube monitors, okay. and it could emit. It was a light. It actually was like a that would flash, and they were sensitive to that light. But you were actually able to aim and and shoot things. Very popular with arcades, and of course, the Sega CD had uh, versions of it. This game looks really cheesy. <laughs> So. Uh, really cheesy, but really fun. You know, everything is shootable. You can unlock secret uh, areas and stuff. Really good with uh, two people. Lots and lots of action. And, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I'm holding my hand up as a gun here. Kind of you shoot and then you shoot off screen to reload. That's how you reload on uh, light gun games. I got really good at that, you know, getting the target, reloading real fast, going back. Yeah. Yeah. This one was a unique one. There was another one. Um, uh... There's quite a few of these, like one called Corpse. Uh, yep. Maximum <sighs> Force. That was one, uh, yeah. What's the cop one? There was one called SWAT. SWAT, yes. And it it also had very similar vibes to this. So, yeah. Well, but uh, ate a lot of quarters back in the day. Lethal Enforcers. I had to Lethal that. Enforcers. We played that, actually, when we were at that arcade recently. We did. And uh, one of the <clears> best, uh, by far, uh, light gun games, different uh, show, but... Uh, Time Crisis. Amazing. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Amazing. And a it lot of them up. useful motion video for yeah. like the characters like this one mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. That was a good that was a good application for it, I think. But, uh, you know, I, so I can't end this conversation without talking about one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, as far as FMV games, it was really well done. High and quality. I'm sure you'll agree with that. The acting was really good because... Th- so this one was done like a movie. It, so we've talked about it before in our retro game reviews that we started to yep. do. I, I did for Super Nintendo Wing Commander 1. Now, after Wing Commander 2, so this is 3, they decided to go full on, you know, full motion video with live actors. But what was cool is the way that they did it, it was like a full blown movie. And the yeah. choices you make in the game change the outcome of the game. And it was it had different branches of trees we're used to that now because we have like skyrim and fallout and you can make choices this is one of the first ones to do that and the acting was very very good of course it had mark hamill which is star wars fame who was luke skywalker there he is you know we had john reese davies who's lord of the rings and he's also of course inside of indiana jones and all kinds of other movies so a lot of star power the other good part about it was it didn't the cut scenes were all full motion video and you had to make decisions that drove the story but the actual gameplay wasn't full motion it was the 3d engine and i have a picture and it of it looks here. great you know you're saying the it, uh, it does for the time now yeah, yeah and it does for the time it had tom wilson in it who was biff in back to the future just a lot of really good actors in it but they didn't rely on the full motion video for the for the game part they actually used 3d renders and it, it was it was pretty decent and it only got better from there because you know, they did a part four and the video quality was higher on this one. Malcolm, Malcolm McDowell. Yep. Mm-hmm. A lot of great actors. And it's funny, you flip through it and you see these actors. Like, oh, they're still acting today. Or, you know, I've seen them in other things. Yeah. And it, it just the quality of the full motion video in these were just so much better. Even the backgrounds, the way they rendered them, it was done like a movie. So this is one of the, the better ones for sure. But you can watch this straight through. They actually remastered all of this and and they stitched them together and you can watch them, I believe, on YouTube and just watch it like a movie without playing the game. And, and that was like a fan passion project that they did. And again, 
they're good enough. It's like watching a movie. So I highly yeah. suggest them. This is one of the high note ones, I would say. So you can be both entertained if you like movie. If you like cheesy B movies, you can go watch Texas Ground Zero, Ground Zero, Texas. Uh, or if you want something a little more high quality, you can watch yourself some Wing Commander. Absolutely. I have just added that to my watch later list. So. Yeah. And and they're good. They're, they're they're good playthroughs. But this was a unique topic, and I wanted to tackle it just because it crosses the line between not just video games but also movies. And we cover, of course, both here. And so this was a great topic. And Doug was talking about it, and I, I never honestly thought about just going out to YouTube and watching some of these. Uh, like I was so used to playing them before, but it, it just reminded me when I went back and looked just how terrible some of them were and how really good some of them were. Yeah. Definitely. So it was worth bringing up. If you love movies, check it out. If you love video games, check it out. It's a good intersection between the two topics. Definitely a good topic. All right. I think that rounds it out, man. Yeah. Good episode 14. So go ahead and close this out, buddy. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank you all for listening. Uh, still got that merch store out there. Lots of good stuff. We uh, try to keep adding uh, things all the time. We've got some really good reviews on uh, Fallout 2, Tactics, and three mm -hmm. uh, i think uh that one is doing pretty good uh, keith and i did a joint venture on that you've got your uh, wing commander review yep. and some others uh, zach mccracken and the alien yeah. mind benders which is another weird one yeah so we're gonna do more we're gonna do more of them uh those are fun little quick videos uh but of course as we mentioned last episode as we head into the summer months we both have a lot going on, so we'll try to stay consistent with posting. So stay tuned. And if you don't see a full blown episode, we may either do warp episodes or we may have a few more uh, retro game reviews. Uh, and we may even, you know, who knows, maybe we'll do uh, retro movie reviews. Yeah. yeah. Heck, why good. not? So, all right. Hey, well, we, we want to do uh, Wing Commander. Oh, hey, there you go. I don't know. Everybody's going to get sick of it. I talk about it so much. So. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, everybody, you have an awesome, awesome week, and we will catch you on the next episode of the Wired Nerdy Podcast. Thank you, everyone. Take care, and God bless. See ya.